My next guest takes on Dan Moret at LFA 15 coming up here on June 30th. Derek Adkins joins me here on the program for the very first time. Derek, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Doing very well. Appreciate you taking the time, man. And uh, first question I always ask people that I've never had on the show before, how'd you get involved in combat sports? Um, I'm a Oklahoma guy and stereotype. We're all wrestlers. Well, I fall on that stereotype. Been I was going to say, it's time. just like that in the womb, I guess. Like if you're, if you, if you're born in Oklahoma, it's just like inevitable. You're going to be a in lot, wrestling. A lot of times. Yeah. So after so. college wrestling, I just kind of, I had to keep, keep competing. So ran off and started getting in a cage and beating people up. Excellent. Now, when did you make that transition from wrestling to mixed martial arts? Um, I believe it was 2012. I actually didn't finish my college career like I wanted to. I actually tore up my shoulder and had to have surgery, six to nine month uh, recovery time and got out of school. And it, once you get out of wrestling, it's really hard to go back because it's, it's, kind of putting yourself in hell so it's it's rough so i got out of that and whenever i felt healthy again and i got a little chubby i was like yeah i gotta go do something i was like well i always said i was gonna fight so got to the gym and started fighting interesting uh were you a fan of mixed martial arts before you started training or did that come after uh yeah i was a big fan and i actually even back in high school i had had some buddies i was friends with all the uh, older wrestlers four or five years older than me and they had gone off done some college stuff came back started helping me with my wrestling actually got me a lot better got me to my oklahoma state titles and all states uh all american and greco roman all that and then one day actually a good buddy of mine joey grzynski who was pretty high level in bellator and some different places a few times back years ago he uh he popped in one day for a me and him worked wrestling and he was just like hey i'm doing one of those uh mixed martial art thing fights and i was like what are you doing he said they offered me 400 dollars." so i said sure and, and started cornering him and helping coaching other guys with wrestling and then i came into a university of central oklahoma and if you do any history with it here recently we've had actually quite a few guys including uh, tim elliott I wrestled with him, and then I helped him with some of his fights. Uh, Jared Hess, who uh, was... Was in Bellator, I remember him. Yeah, yeah Hess was great. and uh, That was a tough guy to work out with. He, he had a gas tank. And also uh, Cole Province. Cole's actually the one who recruited me to UCO, so it was fun watching him do WEC and a little UFC before uh, he hung him up. So Very cool. Okay, that, that's interesting. Um, now, as far as uh, paying the bills, what what uh, what pays the bills for you right now? Obviously, outside of fighting, um, fighting, coaching, uh, private lessons, and beg, borrow, steal. I mean, right now I'm taking my run at being a full time fighter, putting my full belief in this because I believe this can be my job. And for the past six, nine months, something like that, this has been all I've been doing. So good for you, man. You know what? You'll never have any regrets that way if you're going in full time. So I think that's awesome. And it certainly worked out well for you. Here you are fighting for LFA. Great promotion. Probably, I don't know what the stats are, but it's like I think the, the majority of fighters that are in the UFC from that get called up are usually from LFA or RFA and Legacy. How did this all come together with you competing for them? Um, well, I've competed for Legacy Fighting Championship. That's right, yeah. Uh, actually, four times, three times televised on Axis TV. And uh, so I just, and here in Oklahoma, when they come in my backyard, which I think they call it Oklahoma City, they're actually a little bit out of town at uh, Shawnee, Oklahoma. Whenever they come around here, I mean, they're in our backyard. And we have a lot of good fires here in Oklahoma, but there's only a handful of us that are really in the kind of upper echelon. And I'm, I'm one of them. And so they, they know to call me when they come around Oklahoma and I'm ready for a fight. So that that's connected with him i'm happy about that and let's talk about this matchup it's a great fight uh dan moret is a guy that's been around rfa forever uh he's, he's a well-known name um how excited are you to fight him and he's actually moving up a weight class for this one i know he's dabbled uh in both weight classes but his last couple of fights he's been competing at 145 how do you feel like you match up against him i feel like i match up well against him i'm uh i'm getting everything dialed in i've i've only been a pro for about two and a half years if that and i've been Going up to Factory X with uh, Mark Montoya as a head coach up there. Chris Camozzi, James Krause goes over there. I've gotten to train with him 
quite a bit, Brian Camozzi, a bunch of them. And I started that right after I turned pro. And with that, I've just gotten been trying to get better and better. And I feel like I have been. And this fight, it's been a weird year for me. I'm used to fighting every about six weeks. If you look at my my uh, record and if you add in my boxing record that I also do, then uh, my, I mean, my first year of being a pro, I fought 10 times in a, a numbered year and everything. So I'm just happy I got this fight because I haven't fought since December with MMA. So it's been rough. But Dan, I looked him up a little bit. He looks tough. I was just happy to find somebody to take a fight, but uh, it's fits and everything, no issues. But uh, he looks like a tough guy, uh, a little bit of southpaw, which I've been going with a, a lot here lately for some reason. And he looks like an exciting fighter, which is good because I've been, I enjoy my fights when they can be exciting, when I can actually throw, slam, try to go for submissions, and actually be active, not. A grindy, slow, boring fight. Uh, my last legacy fight actually was kind of not not too spectacular. So not a not fan of boring fights. For sure, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know how nice is it? Uh, you got a couple of your teammates uh, fighting. You know, Cortez Coleman's on this card. Um, you've got uh, Brian Foster fighting for PFL coming up. Uh, it seems like you got a lot of teammates that are that are also competing. Does that make things easier helping you get ready for your fight? For sure, for sure. I. Uh, I'm kind of step uh, teammates with Cortez when we're going up there, and I, I didn't make it up there for or whenever he was to Factory X uh, for some scheduling stuff because of my coaching. But uh, it's awesome having him on the card. He's got a great tough fight that uh, actually a guy that I fought that I was way too out of my weight class, and uh, then I got screwed on a cut, but I fought him. But I also have a another teammate, Emmanuel Rivera, who is fighting Justin Rader on this card. Um, that's a real big fight. And with he's been a real close friend and teammate for the past year, year and a half. And when we got, when we're on the same card or really close to each other, it helps out a lot because we just grind on each other, beat up on each other. And he's also, he comes from a striking background. I come from a wrestling background. So we complement each other really well. So having guys that are in camp and getting ready at the same time as me, makes it so much easier to not have to fight for teammates to be in shape and be able to help me out and everything. And how's the cut uh, to lightweight going for you right now? Um, well, I, I've had uh, some people that know my history. I've had some issues with uh, cutting weight and uh, getting down 55. I I started out being a pretty decent size 55 guy, and then I put on some more muscle and everything. And it's been rough the uh, past few times, but I uh, – Finally got it dialed in. I'm hooked up with a uh, Tyler Melee Mitten. Oh, also- the Melee way. Okay, then you're in good hands because that guy is oh, probably yeah. the one is one of the most underrated uh, weight cutting specialists or weight management specialists in the game right now. I, I think his ratings going up. I mean, now he's out with Chris Weidman. He helps Kraus out. Megan Kevin Anderson. Helps- Megan Anderson is fighting for the title. Yeah. It looks like. Oh so. yeah. Oh yeah. So he's got he's got plenty of. Oh, I was up at Factory X one time whenever Megan was there. I'm amazed she makes 45. So yeah, that's what yeah. that was one of the one. She sold me on melees for sure because I was like, okay, she can make it, I can make it. So she, she's big. She's like so tall. I was looking up at her. But yeah, I got melee on me. I'm, I got my diet right. I mean, I've had all my friends and coaches and just family like seeing me and going, you're skinny way early this camp. And I'm like, yeah, and I'm feeling good. I'm training two, three times a day and putting in good work and still feeling healthy. So it's awesome. June 30th, how does this fight end between you and Dan Moret? I don't care. I'm going to put on some fireworks. If uh, if he messes up and tries to go to the ground with me or lets me get him on the, on his back, I'll finish it with a submission like I've done a lot of times. But I've I've gotten in – if uh, anybody who follows me on uh, Facebook or anything like that, they've seen it, that I jump over to make a little extra money and to uh, work on my hands, I do some boxing. So I just beat a 19-0 boxer winning a uh, Oklahoma State title here. And uh, I, I can throw hands. Uh, a lot of people underrate my stand-up. My kicks have gotten immensely better. And I just I feel like I'm, be- I'm a little bit better than him in everywhere. And my movement that I've learned from Kraus, Mark Matoya, my own coach, Mike Giroux, and TJ Tomlin here, I, I think I can outclass him anywhere. I think I'm going to get the finish. I don't really care how it is. I just take whatever they give me. 
I just want to have fun in there and put on an exciting fight. I can't wait for this matchup. It's going to be awesome. LFA 15 is coming up here on June 30th, live on Access TV. Derek, I appreciate you taking the time, man. Where can people find you on social media? And if you got any thank yous or shout outs, the floor is yours. Uh, first, I want to thank my uh, team uh, here at home, American Elite MMA, Edmond, Oklahoma. We're the uh, best gym in Oklahoma. It's awesome. Factory X, I got to thank them. They're my uh, home away from home. I love going up there. Uh, my manager, Jim Walter. He's been taking care of me this year. We've had a lot of bad luck, but uh, we're getting it dialed in now, against people that actually take these fights, and we're ready to kick, kick some people's butts. Um, Facebook, Derek A.K. Atkins. I got that uh, fan page and everything. Give me a like. Come follow me. I put up videos, inspirational things, you know, all the stuff we're supposed to. Instagram, Derek Atkins. I think there may be a one at the end. Or, oh, no, Derek MMA on Instagram. That's what it is. And then Derek Atkins, one on Twitter. Come uh, check me out on those. I always like having more followers, and I like just talking to people. Um, also, my uh, sponsor, Stevenson's Plumbing, uh, Telstar Technologies, and uh, Waymar Acquisitions. 